If Malaysia is to achieve its goals, we must build a strong, solid and strategically demand-driven market that connects sectors of growth to the ambitious goals I have set out for our new economic model. I have already touched on many of the st strategies I believe we will require, including modernization of our education system to build a world-class workforce, prudent fiscal reforms that bring greater balance to our revenue and expenditure framework, and market-friendly affirmative action designed to ensure that all Malaysians benefit from this approach. But underlying all of these strategies must be a clear, a new and clear understanding of the respective roles of business and the government. The government is an enabler of wealth creation. The development of our capital markets will be further strengthened in the second capital market master plan formulated by the Securities Commission. But I also see the acceleration of capital market industries such as fund management, venture capital, and private equity sectors as a crucial part of our drive to create the high-wage, high-skill economy of Malaysia's future. Related to this issue, the Employees Provident Fund, or EPF, presently dominates local equity bond markets with up to 50% of daily bursa volume represented by EPF-related trades, a situation that is not healthy for the market or for the EPF. Today, I can announce that the EPF will be allowed to invest more assets overseas, both diversifying its portfolio and creating more room domestically for new participants. EPF presently has about 6% of assets invested over offshore, and this will increase significantly. EPF will also increase its direct investment in the real economy of Malaysia as an alternative to market investment, taking position in healthcare, commodities, property, and other long-term investment that match EPF's requirements to protect the real rate of return on its assets. On the institutional front, the Malaysian Industrial Development Authority, MIDA, is the principal government agency responsible for promotion and facilitation of investments in the manufacturing and services sector in Malaysia. MIDA has been instrumental in the nation's transformation under different phases of industrial development over the last four decades and has emerged as a well-recognized institution amongst both foreign and domestic investors. However, the time has come for key changes in MIDA in order to make it a more effective investment promotion agency. I am pleased to announce that MIDA will be corporate, corporatized to give it the necessary organizational flexibility to attract and retain manpower and talents it needs. In order to be an internationally competitive national investment promotion agency. The government has also agreed to empower MIDA with the necessary authority to negotiate directly with investors for targeted projects. In addition, MIDA will also be designated as a central investment pro promotion agency for the manufacturing and services sectors, excluding utilities and financial services to enhance the coordination and cohesion amongst the various investment promotion bodies in the country. These changes will enable MIDA to approve incentives in real time and act swiftly to engage investors more effectively. Finally, MIDA will be renamed as the Malaysian Investment Development Authority while maintaining its acronym MIDA, which is a well-known brand internationally. So why change a good name? In addition to this important institutional reform, I believe that we need to look anew at ensuring an appropriate balance between government, GLCs, and the private sector in our economy as part of the new economic model. In the years prior to the Asian financial crisis, 
the private sector contribution to GDP far outstripped that of the public sector. But in the first decade of the new century, the statistics have been reversed. What started as a cyclical necessity of fiscal pump priming has hardened into a dependency with an unsustainable structural condition. I have touched on many of the key principles that will underpin this recalibration of the public-private sector relationship. 